Okay, so I want today to show you a little bit more about my analog digital mixed scope. The project itself is more than one year old, um, but I have recently migrated it to use the Piso Creator 2.1, which made some changes necessary. Um, for the scope itself, I used only internal components of the PSOC. So the circuit you are seeing here actually is just for testing purposes because I need something which I can measure with the scope. Um, what we have here is an, and it's rather terrible to see, uh, we have a 555 um, generator which creates a signal about 1 kilohertz and then I have added a 4-bit binary counter so I can show the digital part of my scope. Um, the only external component I have added is a graphical display because I need some place to show the results. For um, using the scope I use all the buttons and the caps and stuff available on the um, PSOC 5050 board. So um, for the first um, step, I can define how my digital trigger should like. So I can just enter here everything on the digital touch channel to be zero. Um, as you can see with the uh, lower button um, of the CapSense, I can select which bit I want to change and with the top button I rather I then change the button uh, I then, then change the volume. Okay with these two buttons um, I can select the menu options I want to use. Um, I can also select an analog trigger for both channels which I have here. I can select that it, I want to have it triggered there. I want, can select whether I want to have a rising or falling flag uh, flank and I can select which trigger level I want to have. Um, also for both channels I can select one of two sources and I can select which uh, amplification I want to have for that. But since my signal I'm getting from the 555 is already full voltage um, I select a gain of one. Okay, same can be done for the second channel. Um, then I can select um, how many samples I want to get. For example, I want to get 2K and I can also select a sample rate um, because of the limitations of the uh, PSOC 5 ADC. The maximum frequency right now is 500 kilohertz. Okay, next step is selecting which Input signals I want to sample. I have selected both analog and the digital data channel, and then I can just say go. And after that, you can here see my results. Um, this signal here, this triangle waveform, is actually the capacitor voltage of the 555 generator, which um, is changing between one third and two third of supply voltage. The signal above at the top is the output signal of the 555 and this are this, these are the signals of the binary counter. You see it starts with zero, then it gets one, then it gets two, then it gets three. Okay, uh, to show how this looks when I get a more than signal, I will select just a lower sample rate let's say 100 kilohertz um, and let's sample again I'm getting a trigger it needs a moment because it needs to wait when, until the counter gets zero and then you see okay here I have a nice binary counter signal you have the capacitor voltage again and you have the input signal okay and yeah because that's it for the peripheral description. Now let's go to the schematics where I sh can explain in a little bit more detail how it work works together.
The project consists of multiple parts, namely the analog input stage, the digital input stage, all the triggering circuit, and then the user interface. Let's walk through the analog input stage first. There are two channels here, both look the same, so I will concentrate only on the first one. We have two input pins here, selected or handled by an analog MUX. Um, only one of the input channels is active at a time. Then the signal runs through a programmable gain amplifier, which is also programmed from the user interface. And the signal is then handed over to the ADC. The ADC also runs in free running mode, um, but the frequency is not created internally, but by an, ex by an external clock component. And the frequency of this clock gets set by the program according to what the user has selected as a sample rate. The end of conversion output gets then fed to the rest of the circuit. We will see this later in the triggering stage. The analog trigger itself gets fed by the output of the PGA, just send it over to a comparator. As comparison signal, we have an output generated by a VDEC, which also gets programmed by the user interface. So the threshold when the triggering actually happens is programmable. The second stage looks the same, but both uh, stages or both channels share the same clock. The digital input is a little bit more complex. We have the input signal here, an 8-bit bus, which is connected directly to a status register, which gets used for reading the values via a DMA. And then we have down here the compare values as a control register and also a mask register which defines um, for which of the input pins the compare value uh, should, be should be used and for which it should be ignored. Each of the input signals gets fed into a lookup table. I have eight of them here. Each lookup table looks the same. Uh, there are three signals coming in. Input zero is the one coming from the digital input port. Input 2 is the one with the compare value. Input 3 is the one with the mask value. So if you have the mask value set to 0, meaning ignore the signal, uh, the output is always 1. If we select, we want to see the value, the output is 1 for each case where the input signal uh, matches the compare value. And in the end, we feed all eight signals from the lookup tables into a big end, uh, into a big OR. And if one of or if all of them matches, then we can uh, activate the digital trigger. Let's look at the trigger circuit. We have here both analog triggers coming in. We have the digital trigger coming in. Uh, for the analog ones, we have here an XOR to be able to select uh, for which flank the triggering should happen with a rising or a falling flank. So this is just negating the compare output. Then we have also the digital input. Everything of this um, gets feed uh, through an end component to select which of the, which of the triggers are active. So if a zero is written to this control input, control register here, the trigger input is deactivated. If none of the three triggers, analog 1, analog 2, and digital is selected, there is an auto trigger, which is just a clock um, of 1 megahertz, meaning that the instant you press uh, the capture button on the user interface, um, there will be a pulse generated, uh, which then activates the trigger. And after that, we have here and an OR which gets activated by the first trigger which matches. This trigger then uh, gets feed into 
uh, this flip-flop which just remembers okay now we have triggered and it can then enable uh, all the DMA circuits here. Capturing the values happens um, with the end of conversion inputs from the uh, ADCs. Uh, each ADC end of conversion signal feeds in a DMA request and the digital input uh, gets selected by the first one. Actually, uh, since all of the components, uh, uh, both of the ADCs are synchronized with their, with their start, um, the end of conversion inputs uh, should match. So, and there is one DMA component, the first one uh, has an end of request output, which gets then feedback into this flip-flop so when the configured sample depth has been reached, this flip-flop will be reset and then disable the DMA so the circuit stops itself. Okay, and then we have here the reset circuit which is used to enable all of, uh, all of this generation again. Last but not least, we have the user interface. Um, we have uh, a CapSense sense component for all the stuff. Uh, we have two button inputs here, which gets feed through a glitch filter uh, to ensure that no double key presses happen. And then we feed this into status registers. We have the LCD. We have the output pins for the graphical display. And then we have a UART, which allows control via a PC client. From the Software side, I have divided uh, all the major components into separate files. Um, the main component handles all the setup stuff. Then we have the user interface, which handles all the button presses and hands this over then to uh, two different clients. This can be the DDS for waveform generation. This can be the handler for using the local display, meaning CapSense buttons and the LCD display. Um, and then I also have a client for uh, using the PC. Uh, the scope component handles um, all the triggering and capturing and the DMA handles all the setup stuff. 